About two months ago, I got an email from Rep Fitness's owner and he said, Coop, we no longer want to just be known as a budget-friendly gym equipment company. We want to compete with the big boys. And I think that's where this bar lines up. This is the Rep Fitness Power Bar EX, aggressive knurling, fully stainless, both sleeves and shaft. And today I want to tell you how it compares to the Rogue Ohio Power Bar, to the Aleko Power Bar, to the Kabuki Power Bar, and which one, where it lies, and uh, if I think it's worth the money, because it is pretty pricey. Let's do it. Hey guys, this is Coop from GarageGymReviews.com, the greatest review site in the entire world. No bias, actually there's a lot of bias because it's my website, I'm the one that writes on it. But that said, today we're talking about this bar. This is the Rep Fitness Power Bar EX. And as I said in the intro, one of Rep's owners reached out to me and said they are no longer trying to just be known as a budget-friendly company, they're trying to compete with the big boys, which means they're trying to make equipment that is as good as, let's say, Rogue Fitness, Sorenex, Hammer Strength, Elite FTS, William Strength, just the higher end equipment companies. And this bar is one of the first bars that I've received from them that I would say is at that level. Not only based upon the specs, but based upon the price, the feel, everything. Now, it should be said that one difference between Rep and a lot of those companies I mentioned is Rep is importing pretty much all of their equipment. Now, does that mean their equipment's any worse? No, China or anywhere else can make, you know, possibly as good equipment as we can in America. It's sometimes hard to say because I'm kind of patriotic. Um, but I've used some, yeah, exactly, show off the American flag. But I've used, you know, a lot of Chinese equipment that's pretty good. I've used, you know, German cars that are really good. So just because it's made outside the U.S. doesn't mean it's bad, okay? But this bar is fully stainless. That means everything about it is stainless. Well, not everything. Everything that you're going to touch is stainless. So the shaft and the sleeves both. This is one of the first fully stainless bars that I've seen that's like commercially available for more, most people to order. What I mean by that is like a Vanco, they have a stainless steel bar. I think Iron Wolf used to make a fully stainless steel bar. But both those companies, it's kind of hard to order from. They do it on limited stock. Basically, this is one of the first one that has both a stainless steel shaft and stainless steel sleeves. And you're asking yourself, Coop, why would you want a fully stainless steel bar? Well, the reason is, because corrosion. So if you're in a garage gym like I am today, there's gonna to be corrosion on your bar, on basically every part of your bar. If we go over here, I've got this, you know, Texas Power Bar Mac Barbell Bar up top that is, you know, pretty corroded, okay? It's a bare steel bar. However, if you use a stainless steel bar, it's not really gonna have any corrosion and you're not gonna have any corrosion on the sleeves if you're using stainless steel, okay? So the difference between this and other stainless steel bars like the Rogue Ohio Power Bar is this doesn't just have stainless steel on the shaft, it has stainless steel on the sleeves as well. So that means if you're marring up your, your bar ends, your sleeves with plates, you're not gonna face corrosion issues. For a garage gym, stainless steel is king. Okay, now let's talk about the specifics of the bar. So kind of what I think this bar is, is, is they've married, um, I would say a Rogue Ohio Power Bar with a Kabuki strength knurling at a lower price, okay? For you devout followers of either of those companies, that's gonna sound like heresy. However, it's, it's a great bar. So the knurling is finer than a Rogo Ohio Power Bar. Rogo Ohio Power Bar is known as some of the best knurling in the world. They use what's called a volcano type of knurling. So basically it has cutouts, so there's more surface area of the hand that makes contact with knurl. Kabuki, they did a finer knurl, and it's somewhat similar to the Rogue, but it's a finer knurl. This has a knurling that's very similar, in my opinion, to the Kabuki Strength New Gen Bar. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they bought the Kabuki New Strength Gen Bar, and this is just talking. I have no idea if they did this. I have no clue. But it's so similar that I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they did. Okay, so it's a very fine knurl, but it's deep and I don't want to say sharp because it's not like a Texas power bar that's going to rip your callus, but it is aggressive. So if you're using any sort of chalk on poles, presses, or anything like that, you're not going to be worried about this falling off the bar. And the center neural has the same you know, depth of neural. So it's still very solid. Um, honestly, 
The Kabuki was one of my favorite neurals I've ever used, and therefore this is one of my favorite neurals I've ever used because it's that similar. Uh, Honestly, when I pulled this out of the box, I was not expecting to be that impressed because I have other rep fitness barbells and I'm honestly not that big of a fan. This is the best one they made. I mean, this bar, I mean, the knurling, in a power bar, knurling is really one of the most important features other than tensile strength because uh, you want a stiff bar and this knurling is out of this world. It's that good, okay? But they use a 29 millimeter shaft, very similar to the Ohio Power Bar, same as the Kabuki New Gen Bar. Uh, if you like a Texas Power Bar, that's 28 and a half millimeters, so a little bit different. I prefer 29, not for pulling, but if I'm pulling, I'm gonna use a deadlift bar most of the time. So back to the sleeves, they're using a fully stainless steel sleeve, they're using two bronze bushings, and then one, stain, or one steel bushing. Um, I'm not sure why they did that. There is a little bit of play Coming close, coming close. There's a little bit you can kind of hear. It's not a lot. I, it's not nothing, you know, it's nothing you should really, I mean, I'm not worried about it in any way. Um, there is just a little bit more play there than with, you know, the Aleko Rogue or Kabuki, not a lot. But I do want to show off their end cap. Okay, one time I said that Rep didn't have that great of end caps. This end cap is awesome, okay? I love this end cap. It's pushed in very similar to say um, a Texas Power Bar, and then it has this nice rubber coating, that gel there with the snap rings. It's just great, okay? That has nothing to do with the performance, okay? Really that only matters to people that care about aesthetics like me, um, but it looks good. It's a great end cap. They've noticed, they've, they've paid attention to the details. When you see a nice end cap, oftentimes it means they paid attention to the details. Same thing goes for the knurling. So the powerlifting neural marks, the, the uh, knurling stops and starts really evenly. It just works. It works really well. Okay, that's the bar, but now let's talk about it in comparison to some others, shall we? We have the Rep Power Bar EX, the Rogue Ohio Power Bar Stainless Steel, the Aleko Competition IPF Powerlifting Bar, and the Kabuki New Gen Power Bar. So this is just an astronomical amount of money and barbells right here. Um, and they're all considered some of the best, if not the best power bars in the world. Okay, so I'm gonna do a full video breaking all of these down um, and comparing them, because I think this is really like the creme de la creme that's available. Also bring a Texas power bar out. Um, but I wanted to compare to kind of 29 millimeters to 29 millimeters. I'll do that in the future. But for now, I just want to get a brief overview. The knurling on the rep bar, which is the front one, is very similar to the kabuki. Now we'll you know show some close-up of this. The kabuki is a little bit finer, I think. However, kabuki doesn't offer a stainless steel bar. Um, this one is nickel coated, um, electroless nickel, which I really like. Uh, but it's not going to have as good a corrosion resistance as stainless steel, although it'll be close. The Leiko, unfortunately, is a bare steel bar. Uh, this is for powerlifting, so they really just wanted you to have the best grip possible. It's a very aggressive neural. Honestly, probably the one, one of the most aggressive out of all of these. Um, it will rip your calluses, but it's made for competition. The Rogue uh, Ohio Power Bar is largely considered one of the best value power bars out there, and I still think it's the best value power bar, okay? The Rogo Ohio Power Bar is the best value power bar. However, would I suggest the stainless steel Ohio Power Bar, which this is what most people wanna know. Coop, would you suggest the stainless steel Ohio Power Bar over the Ro Rep Power Bar EX? This is gonna be controversial, but no. <laughs> what I just said was so controversial, it not only caused the power to go out, it also caused the camera to break. So we're back, we went to the store, we bought another $3,000 camera, and we're here. Okay, so is the Rep Power Bar EX as good as the Stainless Steel Rogue Fitness Ohio Power Bar? They're very similar. Both are 210K tensile strength. Both have a very nice, aggressive neural that anybody could love, any mother could love. Um, the difference, one difference is Rogue's made in the US. It's a little bit more expensive at 395 or so plus shipping. Reps is around 379 plus shipping, so it's still high dollar. Rogue's is made in the USA in Columbus, Ohio. To some of you, that really matters. Does it really matter to me? I still don't know where I land on made in the USA. I want jobs in the US, 
but is bringing manufacturing back home crazy important? I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm not positive. I'm not sure where I stand on that yet. However, I'm just reviewing barbells here. So without going into the economics of things, they feel very similar. The neurals are both great. They both use a similar rotation system. They're both similarly priced. However, what Rep has on Rogue is Rogue's using a chrome sleeve, Rep's using a stainless steel sleeve, and they both have lifetime warranties. So for 20 bucks less or so, you can get a fully stainless bar from end cap to end cap. And it's as good as, in my opinion, in feeling and specs and everything like that. Yes, it's imported, but I mean, it feels amazing, the Rep Power Bar. I feel kind of bad saying that, you know? It's like, shouldn't I just say the USA Made is the best bar? But ah, just from barbell perspective, I never thought I'd see a Rep Bar beat out Rogue, honestly. Now, I still suggest the Ohio Power Bar for most people in the bare steel or the black zinc because it's a lot cheaper. But man, this bar is that good, okay? Compared to the Kabuki, the Kabuki's a different price level. I, you know, the Kabuki's just, it's a whole nother animal. So is the Laco. They're more, they're more expensive. Those are kind of just, if you want, you know, top of the top of the top of the top, you go those that far in price. Um, but the rep can hold its ground in any power, with any power bar. It's that good. I mean, seriously, I'm impressed with this bar. Okay. So this has been Coop from garageandreviews.com. Like I said, we'll do a full video talking about all these. I'll also have a comparison and review on the site that you can visit. I'll put a link in the bio. Thanks for watching. This has been Coop from GarageGemReviews.com. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace.